Hi guys, today we're taking a look at the latest wheelbase from Fanatec. This is a CSL DD together with the CSL pedals, pedals clutch kit and the club sport shifter. Details for all these items are in the description below, including purchasing links. So the CSL DD is the cheapest direct drive wheelbase and comes in at the same price as the Logitech G923. But in this case, it's just the base you get. You'd have to buy the wheel and the pedal separately. And it's aimed at the average sim racer and not the professionals. So I'll be unboxing all these items, showing what you get in the packaging, setting it all up and testing it out to see how well it performs. So let's begin by initially taking a look at the CSL DD wheelbase. So there's a few options you need to be aware of for this. So the first one being the table clamp. So you're not limited to just using the wheelbase on a sim frame. You can have it attaching to a table, which is quite nice to have if you didn't have space for a sim frame. The clamp supports table thicknesses of five to 60 millimeters and it's angled. So be aware that there's a 15 degree angle on there. So I'll show that later on in the video. There's two power options with this. There's a standard power supply that gives off five Newton meters of torque. And there's another boost one that gives eight Newton meters. Let's open up the CSL DD wheelbase and see what you get in the packaging. You get some Fanatec stickers, quick start guide, which is multi-language. You get some fixtures for attaching the wheelbase and you get a cable, one end is USB-A, the other side is Type-C and the cable length is just over 2.8 meters. And finally, we have the wheelbase. Construction is very solid of this, metal all the way round. This is used as a heat sink to keep the whole device cool. Plastic at the front here and at the back, there's plastic as well. You've got the point where you'd connect your wheel and looking at the design on there, you can see how it is all the way around. The accessories you get with this are the T-nuts and they're used for mounting the device. They don't come with any screws, so you'll have to buy the screws separately. And it's just a matter of taking them and they just slot in underneath. And you just gotta line it up on your SIM frame and then screw it down. Looking at the back, you've got the connection points over here. So your USB, power, data, shifter one, shifter two, pedal and handbrake. And that's all the connection points here. And just to show the power rating details underneath the device. Looking on the connection point where you'd attach the wheel, there's a sticker going round, just informing you as part of the quality control process, there may be some marks on here. So nothing to really be concerned about. And you'd use the wheel in conjunction with one of these quick release adapters. Let's remove the cover over here. Let's move on to the wheel. So this is the CSL Elite Steering Wheel McLaren GT3 V2. In the packaging, you get some stickers and a quick start guide, which is multi-language. There's some button caps here. And here's the wheel you get in the packaging. So build quality feels good on here, really strong plastic all the way around, I'm trying to flex it, you can't flex it easily. Over at the back, got your paddle shift here. This is metal and additional paddles just over here, which are strong plastic. Buttons feel good on here. And to remove them, it's very easy. They just pull off and you can put one of these replacement ones on. You've got the connection point over here. So if we take off this plastic that's on there and now opening up the quick release adapter. And the way this works is on the back of the wheel, there's a cover, pull that off. That sits into place there. Then you've got the fixtures here, some screws to attach onto there and a screw that goes into the side together with an allen key to attach it. When you're placing the quick release adapter onto the wheel, just make sure you get it the right way around. So there's a notch on here and that should go at the top. And if you look at the wheel base, you can see the pins going around and there's a slight gap at the bottom and that sort of marries up with this one. So for this, we would go this way around with the slot at the top here. Let's get this attached on. So each screw has a little ring here that goes on. You can just tighten it up with the Allen key that comes with it. Attaching it on is simple. Just place it into position, pull up here and just sit it into place. Now there's a hole just over here and that's for the additional screw you get and that just locks it into position. And that's it firmly in place now. Next, let's have a look at the table clamp. The table clamp comes with these components. This is the part that attaches to the wheelbase. The first thing we need to do is 
remove this part. I've removed the wheel from the wheel base just to make things easier. And then looking at this area here, there's two plastic bits. They slot into these locations and the metal piece just goes in here and I can slot it all together. See if I do that. There you go, that's in position. And then taking this piece sits into place here. You can see the hole just over there and then using the locking mechanism. There you go, that's all that's involved in this. And now taking the wheelbase just slots into position on our table. We can tighten up just below here. Then taking the plastic adapter it comes with, you can place it over the locking mechanism. It just gives you a bit more grip to turn it and lock it in place. And there you have it, as simple as that table mount. Let's take a look at the shifter. In the packaging, you get a quick start guide and some stickers. You get three cables. Two of them have with what looks like an RJ12 connector and the other one has an RJ12, I think it's called DIN connector. You get some fixtures. So these are mount related and a set of screws to attach these onto the shifter. You get a replacement gear knob, Fanatec at the bottom there and on the other side, all metal finish on this one. Coming onto the shifter, you can see the gears top and bottom on here and obviously neutral there. If I place it into position, you hear a clunk as it's going in, a real quality feel to this and a metal finish all the way round. Gear knob can be easily replaced just by spinning it off. And the one you get with this is obviously metal top and bottom and a rubber finish around the middle. Showing you around the sides, you can see a selector at the bottom, it says eight over here and sequential there. Continuing along, you've got a connector point there and another selector on the other side, sequential and eight. And that's all you've got on there. And coming underneath, you can see the mounting points on here. Next up, we've got the CSL pedals, the CSL pedals clutch kit and the CSL pedals tuning kit. Let's open it all up and see what you get in there. In the pedals box, you get some stickers and a quick start guide, which is multi-language. You get a cable with an RJ12 connector, a bag with some fixtures, a metal plate to attach the brake and accelerator on there. Taking a look at the accelerator pedal, solid build to this, metal construction. Area to push down here is plastic. It's spring loaded. You can just see the spring down there. If I push down, it just bounces back up again. Electronics are in this area, connection point, And here it says wheelbase load cell. So this is the point that connects to the wheelbase. Flipping around the other side, you've got brake and clutch connection points. Rubber pads underneath, coming over to the Brake, similar construction again, solid build to this and plastic cover over here. A bit more tension behind this one. You can see for yourself, doesn't easily go down. And connections wise, obviously a single cable to connect up to the connection point on the accelerator. Underneath again, there's two rubber pads. The assembly for this is really easy. It's just a matter of taking the pedal, putting it underneath, aligning it to the position you want it, and then just screw it down. The clutch kit comes with stickers and a quick start guide multi-language. You get some fixtures and the clutch. Same build quality as the other pedals and showing the tension behind that. It is spring loaded, you can see just in there, and a single wire here to allow you to connect to the connection point on the accelerator. Coming onto the pedals tuning kit and opening this up, you've literally just got three pedal points on here and it's just a matter of just replacing these with the existing foot points on the pedals. And there's just two screws at the back. And if you didn't like the plastic finish on these, you just go for these metal ones. Let's begin by installing the tuning kit. So it's just a matter of taking all the screws out the back of the pedals and putting the new ones on. Take the screws off the tuning kit pedal. There's a washer and a nut on the other end. On the pedal, you can see there's adjustment points so you can raise it or lower it. We'll just go for the default position it was in and just tighten it up now. There you go, the pedal's attached now. Let me do the same for the other two. Let's assemble the pedals onto the plate over here. But first of all, let's get the cables connected up. So probably best just to feed these through to keep it nice and tidy. So this is the brake, goes in the connection point here and the clutch goes in the end point, just there. We can pull some of the cable back now just to keep things as tidy as possible. Do the same over here. Let's get the plate attached. So you've got some rubber points either side there, cable management area there and screw attachment points here. Now flipping it over, we just line it up and put the screws down. 
And there we have it, pedals are assembled now. Just to show the two different power options, so this is a standard one, which gives five Newton meters of torque, and this is the boost kit that gives eight Newton meters of torque. Connectors on there are different, so this takes a three pin connection, and this takes a two pin. Boost kit is much bulkier than the standard one. And looking at the output on both of these, the standard one is 24 volts, 3.75 amps, and 90 watts output, whereas the boost kit is 24 volts, 7.5 amps, and 180 watts output. I'll test out both of these to give you an idea of if it makes much of a difference going between the two. Let's attach all the devices onto our SIM cockpit. So this is by Track Racer. I've already reviewed it. I'll include a card in the corner there if you wanna check out the review for that, and I'll include details in the description below. So like I've already mentioned, you're not restricted to having one of these devices. You can go with attaching the wheelbase and the shifter onto a desk and just having the pedals underneath your desk. Let's get the wheelbase attached onto the frame. So the T-nuts here can be put in either in single file here at the side and one in the middle, or you could go for a four formation. Really, in a way, it depends on what you've got here on your frame. So I'm gonna go for two and one in the middle. And what I'm gonna have to do is just line it up underneath just to make sure the holes marry up. So what I'll do, place it like so, bring the middle one in, pull the other two out to roughly the correct place, place it over it, and we'll tighten it up underneath. And there we have it, the three screws are firmly in now and the wheelbase is firmly in position. We'll install the shifter next and the screw holes marry up to these positions. Screws are in on this and it's firmly attached. For the pedals, there's a plate that's over here. I just removed the plate and then took the pedals and bolted them on. So I've got a screw on this side and a nut on that side, so there's two holding this in position. Let's get all this connected up. So for the shifter, one end obviously goes in there. We'll feed the other end just underneath here, and it goes into shifter one connection point. Pedals connector next, already plugged in. I've fed the cable through the plate over here. It's coming out the other side. Feed it underneath here, and obviously that connects into the pedal connection point. Then we've got the type C connection. That goes into here. And then finally the power cable. And that's it, it's all connected up. Let's tidy up all the cables by using Velcro straps to tie them firmly into position. Cable management is in place. You can see everything's nice and tidy. One thing I did find, the cable for the shifter going back to the wheel was too short. So I took the short wire and the longest wire and connected them together using one of these ethernet connectors. Attaching the wheel next. Just put the screw in underneath. Let's move on to ensuring the firmware on all these devices is up to date. So coming over to the Fanatec website, there's a driver area in the corner and we want to download Fanatec driver 415. It's downloaded, let's open the file. There's two different drivers here, 32-bit and 64-bit. I'm going to go for the 64-bit one. Go through the setup. Need to restart my computer now. The software is installed. On my desktop, you can see Fanatec control panel. Opening that up, no devices found. Now coming over to the wheelbase, pressing the power. Colors red on here, indicating it's in PC mode. And now coming back to the app, you can see it's picked it up. You can see here the wheelbase needs a firmware update. Let's open the firmware manager and click update. It's giving details now how to flip between the Xbox One mode to PC mode. Next to this, now looking in the Fanatec control panel, you can see all the devices we've got connected on there and clicking in between each one. So this is the settings for the wheelbase, steering wheel, pedals, shifter. You've got the tuning menu here. At the moment it's on standard and flipping over to advanced. You can have different profiles on this and using the wheel you can flip between these different settings. I'm not going to change anything. I'm going to leave it as is. Going on to firmware update, you can see everything's up to date. Links and settings. One thing you may find after firmware update is that the wheel won't be aligned. So to resolve that, you just go to wheel center calibration. Now all you do is line up the wheel. Looking over here in the corner shows what it thinks the wheel's position is. And you can see for yourself, it's not that. So now if I click center, there you go, it's straightened out. Now if I turn the wheel, there you go. Now you can make these changes to calibrate directly off the wheel as there is a customized menu on here, but it's quicker just to do it off the PC. With this being up to date now, we can test this out. 
So the wheelbase is compatible with both the PC and the Xbox. And I've got my Xbox Series X here. Let's plug it directly into this. Now coming over to the power button, you can see the light on there is red. That means it's in PC mode. Pressing it goes to green, which is Xbox mode. Pressing it one more time, it goes to yellow, which indicates Club Sport wheelbase version 2.5 compatibility mode. And if I hold on to it, a few seconds, it powers off. Press it again, turns on. Let's give it a moment to initialize and let's flip over to Xbox mode. With everything connected up, we can just turn on the Xbox by pressing the Xbox logo there. You can hear it starting up in the background. With everything set up and running, let's jump in and test this out. The whole experience is pretty impressive, it takes the racing experience to another level, not something you can achieve by just racing with the controller. So let's initially take a look at the CSL DD wheelbase. As I've shown, it can be table mounted and bottom mounted, but it can also be mounted from the sides. The initial feel is solid and very smooth with direct drive. Coming from someone who's only used Logitech racing wheels, it feels like a big step up. Direct drive is more expensive in comparison to Logitech's gear-driven wheels and Thrustmaster's belt-driven ones. But what it is, it's essentially a motor on which you can mount your steering wheel onto, which gives you strong, incredibly smooth and detailed force feedback in comparison to Logitech's wheels, which are internally made up of plastic cogs and gears, which have a more notchy feel where you can feel the cogs inside turning as you're playing. And it's also much quieter. With the force feedback, you can feel the wheel with a rumble coming from it, bumping into the curb or coming off the track. You can feel the sensation feeding back to you from the wheel. Torque level Levels with the basic power supply is very good at 5 newton meters of torque. In comparison, Logitech's G29 provides 2.1 newton meters of torque. Now, I was a little bit dubious about the booster kit, as essentially it's just got a bigger power supply, giving a higher amp and wattage rating, taking the torque to 8 newton meters. This comes in with quite a high price attached to it, but the torque levels from this do feel greater giving you a more enhanced experience. I guess by just simply pushing more power to the wheelbase. Personally, I feel Fanatec should not have these different power options and just give the boost pack regardless as part of the package. So if you're buying this and can afford the boost kit, it's definitely worth getting the extra torque levels, which enhances the force feedback, giving you a greater immersive experience. Coming on to the CSL Elite steering wheel, McLaren GT3 V2, and it's a full-size replica used in the McLaren GT3 race cars. There's a small OLED display, which displays the current gear you're in. This screen also works in conjunction with the controls on there. So you can flip between the different wheel profiles and customize a lot of the settings available via the Fanatec control panel app on a PC without the need for a PC. It's got a good solid build to it and a great feel while you're racing. Moving on to the shifter, you have multiple mount positions so you can mount it from any of the sides and the bottom. Now this is another massive upgrade to the Logitech Driving Force shifter, which honestly has a very basic toy-like feel to it, but this club shifter has a solid build quality to it, giving the most realistic shifting experience with its seven gear H pattern shifter. The reverse and seventh gear has an inhibitor to stop you from accidentally going into it. So for you to go into these gears, you'll have to push down to get into them. You can easily flip between H pattern and sequential mode by moving the switch on both sides near the base and the best thing about this is you don't have to restart the shifter or use a tool. One thing that did surprise me is that you can get a USB adapter for this and plug it into your PC to use with other racing wheels like Logitech and Thrustmaster. But just to note it's not essential to get this as generally most of the wheels have paddle shifts on them. And finally onto the pedals. They too have a solid feel, not cheap in any way, made from heavy steel with no sideways play. The pedal face positions can be adjusted allowing you to move them higher or lower and you can replace the face pedals with the aluminium ones using their tuning kit. The accelerator is really nice and smooth and the brake has a PU damper providing a realistic progressive feeling. The clutch kit is optional as I've shown earlier and you'd want to get this if you wanted to use a shifter and like the other pedals it has a good feeling to it. The pedals work with any Fanatec wheelbase or can be used standalone on a PC with a Club Sport USB adapter. There's also a load cell kit coming soon. So in summary, I'm blown away by the CSL DD wheelbase, CSL pedals and shifter. 
Coming from the budget Logitech racing wheel, this feels like a massive step up for me. And adding a decent SIM cockpit together with a good TV or monitor, you really do have the ultimate SIM racing experience, giving you a truly immersive feeling when racing. Price-wise, for a basic setup with the CSL DD wheelbase, CSL pedals and a wheel, you could get started for around 630 euros, which is a mid-range budget, I'd say. And that's pretty good for a direct drive system for a PC or Xbox that's aimed at the average sim racer and not professional. And you can add the other bits later on, like the clutch kit and shifter if you wanted. Negatives wise, it would have been great if it also worked on the PlayStation 5, but there is a PlayStation version coming out later on. It's a shame the boost kit doesn't come with a wheel by default, but nonetheless, an awesome bit of kit, which definitely doesn't disappoint. So there you have it. You made it to the end of another video, and I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. If you're new to the channel, I hope you can subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of my next release and don't forget to smash that like button as it really helps me out. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.